What's going on everyone? So we got a new update in regards to DeJounte Murray and potentially going to the Los Angeles Lakers via trade. This comes from Hoops Hypes, uh, Michael Scotto. Uh, he said, any framework for a DeJounte Murray trade to the Lakers would likely involve guard the Andrew Russell, league sources told Hoops Hype. Uh, however, that would be contingent on Russell being flipped to a third team from Atlanta in the process. Russell's $18.69 million player option for next season and his playing style next to Trey Young isn't viewed as a fit for the Hawks. The Hawks are not looking to take back salary past this season, league sources told uh, Hoops Hype. The Hawks coveted uh, Lakers guard Austin Reeves in trade talks surrounding Murray, but were denied by Los Angeles, league sources said. Given the recent success of the Knicks have had uh, following the OG on an Ubi trade, uh, New York isn't in a rush to push their chips in for Murray, league source told Hoops Hype. Several rival executives who spoke with Hoops Hype are already unofficially penciling in uh, on an Ubi to re-sign with the Knicks this offseason. Thus far, Brooklyn is shying away from Atlanta's asking price of at least two first-round picks for Murray. Hoops Hype has learned. Uh, since December 26, the Nets have won only one game with a Friday night matchup against the Lakers next on their schedule, which Lakers play them today. So this is good news and not so good news, right? A couple things. First off, um, it looks like the Knicks and the Nets are out of the DeJounte Murray race. The Nets have only won one out of their last 10 games. The Knicks are on a major streak, and they don't necessarily want to shake things up. They like where they're at, right? So that eliminates those two teams. Now, there are still <laughs> several other teams that are supposedly rumored in DeJounte Murray, although another team in the Philadelphia 76ers have reportedly bowed out of any DeJounte Murray trade, that they still are going to be active at the trade market, but they don't necessarily want a DeJounte Murray or like a Zach Levine or any of the people that are available right now. They're kind of just looking to upgrade around the edges, right? That makes sense. Now, as far as the sort of, I guess not necessarily bad news, but interesting news is the Lakers would have to find a third team or the other option is D'Angelo Russell basically I guess, promises that he won't re-sign with Atlanta, that he won't opt in with Atlanta, that he basically says like, hey, if you trade me to Atlanta, I'm going to opt out and I'll hit free agency, right? The problem is with that is Atlanta would have to be willing to take his word. And two, D'Lo would probably have to find a team willing to pay him $18.6 or whatever, right? So, because... You know, if his market is $15 million, he'd basically be leaving like $3.5 million on the table to not re-sign or not opt in with the Atlanta Hawks. So, based on the reports, it looks like Atlanta wants to just take back expiring deals and things like that, which, again, is good for the Lakers because that means there is a path to get DeJounte Murray without trading Austin Reed. Which, that was a real question. And if the market continues to dwindle down for DeJounte Murray, then that puts the Lakers in an even better position because now the Lakers can put themselves in a position where it's like, okay, well, we're only one of like two teams. But the Lakers would have to find a third team to take D'Angelo Russell because they don't view D'Angelo Russell as a fit next to Trey Young, which makes sense for Atlanta, right? And that was always kind of the concern. It's like, why would they necessarily want D'Lo, right? Maybe they'd want Rui Hachimura because he could be a nice young piece to kind of rebuild, retool with. Um, you know, maybe they'd want like a Max Christie, things like that. But for you to swap D'Lo for Murray, then it just doesn't make sense for Atlanta because the, the whole two-point guard thing didn't work. And... D'Lo and Trey Young would probably be a pretty rough backcourt. So either you can convince Atlanta to maybe do a deal elsewhere, although the Lakers, based on some reports, don't really even want to trade Rui Hachimura. 
So if they don't want to trade Rui and they don't want to trade Austin Reeves, then that just basically leaves D'Angelo Russell, which they can unload, but they have to send him to a third team. So the problem is, is who is that third team? Now, you need a team that could use a point guard uh, and would be comfortable with him opting in for another season. Question is, again, like how many teams, one, A, need a point guard, and B, would be okay with opting in? Now, here's the thing, though, is any of the teams that would be willing to take on D'Lo or maybe interested in D'Lo, they would essentially get him for nothing. Right? Like, they could basically... All they'd have to do is just give expiring contracts or something. Right? So, that could be beneficial, but it makes things hard. Because the Lakers have to find a team that D'Lo would make sense with, would be comfortable with D'Lo resigning, and has expiring contracts in order to make it work. Right? Now... The Knicks have Evan Fournier's contract, and they can move off Evan Fournier, so maybe you could expand it. And Because I don't think D'Lo would make sense for the Knicks, maybe in like a backup role, right? And they could look at it as like, hey, if you opt back in, we're just going to keep you for the year or trade you next year, and that'd give them a trade chip. Knicks could make sense. I think the team that makes the most sense is the San Antonio Spurs, right? Now, they supposedly are interested in DeJounte Murray, But they could look at it as like, wait a minute. We so we could trade and give up a bunch of assets to go get DeJounte Murray, or we could essentially get D'Angelo Russell for free. And look, D'Lo is still a very good point guard. And he is an excellent pick and roll point guard. He is excellent at finding the big man. I mean, he has been excellent alongside Anthony Davis. Right, him and Anthony Davis pick and roll is one of the best plays in all of basketball, and you know if you were to go get D'Angelo Russell, he'd be looking for Victor Wembanyama every chance he gets. And the San Antonio Spurs desperately need a point guard and one that would be willing to give Victor the ball. And D'Lo, when Victor does have the ball, he can pass out of the post, and you'd have a guy in D'Lo who could shoot. So that could be a nice balance attack. And it wouldn't cost San Antonio anything. You know, maybe they throw in a second or something like that. But it's like, okay, well, we'd have to give up a couple firsts. Or we could go get D'Lo and just, you know, basically throw in uh, McDermott's contract. Right? Because they have some expiring deals. And we get D'Lo for free. Which could make sense. Right? You, You... Because they... Again, you need a team that needs a point guard. The Spurs need a point guard, right? You need a team that has an expiring contract that can match salaries, right? Well, you have Doug McDermott, and then you could you have they have a couple like other like small pieces. So they could unload like two guys, go do that. And you need a team that'd be comfortable with D'Lo potentially opting back in. And again, the Spurs could do that. Also, the Spurs have some salaries, so they could take back a little more. So, basically, you could work out uh, essentially a three-team deal centered around D'Lo, DeJounte Murray, and then, like, Doug McDermott, and then whatever other pieces need to be involved, right? Lakers, I'm sure, sending some picks. Maybe the Spurs send a couple seconds or something, Um, you know, and and you just kind of work it like that. I could see that making sense for all sides, all parties involved. I might actually do a video kind of diving into that specifically because that's probably the Lakers' best bet is San Antonio um, because they are in the market for a point guard. And look at it like this. You you give it the rest of this year to see how it works with Victor. If it doesn't work, now you have an $18 million expiring contract that you could trade. Or just let his money fall off the books, right? Give him the year and a half, see how it works. If it's great, you re-sign him, right? And you could probably re-sign him for reasonable. Or B, if it doesn't work and it's like, ah, you know, D'Lo isn't it, then you just let him go. Let him go in free agency. And the Spurs don't have to give up anything. 
Like they don't have to, they're, they're just giving up an expiring contract to basically get the point guard for free. They're basically picking up their need by just being the outlet for the two teams that are trying to figure it out. San Antonio makes a world of sense to, to help with that. Now, would they kind of help the Lakers? You know, I think they would because they'd be helping themselves. And they were willing to take on Russell Westbrook last year. I mean, that was heavily reported. That they were willing to take on Russell Westbrook to basically get assets and things like that. So, in this case, it's like, well, you have Victor. You need a point guard. Instead of giving up a bunch of assets to go get a point guard, keep your assets, take D'Lo, and let's call it a day. Right? Boom. Win-win for everybody. But, I, again, like the Lakers are in good shape because... There is still a path to Murray, right? There is still an opportunity for the Lakers to land DeJounte Murray. And it appears that Atlanta is aware (laughs) that, hey, we're we're probably going to have to trade D'Lo. Okay, fine. We'll trade you Murray, and we're okay with you trading D'Lo, but we don't want D'Lo. you got to send D'Lo elsewhere. So figure out that third team and... We'll make it work. But we want to base... They basically want to unload DeJounte Murray's contract and get some salaries in the process. Or get some uh, uh, assets in the process. Is what it seems like based on that report. They they basically want to wipe their books on as many pieces as possible. Which could be good for the Lakers, right? Because if Atlanta really doesn't want to... If Atlanta is like, hey, we want to clear as much salary as possible... Well, then that's where the Lakers come in and go, okay, well, okay, you don't want D'Lo, but you want these other pieces. Okay, well, we'll take Clint Capella, DeJounte Murray, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Sadiq Bey, and we'll send D'Lo elsewhere. We'll get you some other pieces from other guys, and then you take some players from us, right? And, you know, is, is there any young guys or anything like that that you're interested in, right? Or maybe you're just kind of finding a couple outlet teams. The problem is, is that the more teams that are involved, the harder it is. Like, three team deals are incredibly difficult to finalize because everyone has to be happy. But it's kind of why I think a team like San Antonio makes sense because, like, they don't lose anything by just taking D'Lo, right? If anything, they just found their point guard, and now they can focus on other pieces and other needs that they need. Worst case scenario is you just got a point guard just to ride you out and help develop Victor faster and you just let him go or trade him next year, right? And kind of get an idea of like, okay, well, what would a, a, a point guard look like? What type of point guard do we need next to him? Right? I just think that that makes a world of sense. But I mean, the Lakers have been involved in multiple, like multi-team deals, and they fall through almost every time. The Lakers had a multi-team deal set up with uh, the Knicks, and it ended up falling through. And they were supposed to get Cam Reddish and... And then even Toronto, there was talks about them getting uh, um, uh, Gary Trent, right? And it ended up, all of everything ended up falling through. And it's supposed to be THT is supposed to go to the Raptors and then all other pieces, whatever, right? So, you know, it's just, it's very hard to do multi-team deals. I mean, the Lakers were in one last year, right? Like, great example of the Spurs is that, right? You had the Utah and... And Lakers trade. And you had a team in Minnesota that was like, hey, we need a point guard beyond this season because D'Lo isn't going to re-sign. So we'll take Mike Conley. And boom, everybody wins. That's kind of what I could see with the Spurs. Is like, okay, well, you need a point guard. We need expiring contracts. You have expiring contracts. And you need a point guard. And we have a point guard that you need. So here, here's your free point guard. Give us the expiring contracts. We'll send those to Atlanta. Atlanta sends us DeJounte Murray. We send Atlanta whatever other variables go into it. Everybody wins and the world keeps spinning. Maybe you can get a Clint Capella or, you know, and a Sadiq Bey out of it or other pieces out of it and just kind of be like, hey, you know, we'll we'll take on some of your salary. right? We'll take on some some of your longer term deals, right? Yes, the Lakers have multiple guys that are on salary, like, right, like Rui Hachimura, but Rui Hachimura would make sense for them, 
Like they don't want like they don't want a bunch of like long term salary that just doesn't fit and doesn't work. And Rui Achimura is making less money than like Clint Capella and some of these other guys. So it's like okay, well we could we could work it out to where you know you're you're we're basically taking a brunt of it. You get more tradable pieces, and everybody wins. It's kind of how I'm looking at it. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. So I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Um. Think the Lakers get it done with uh, the way it currently is? Do you think no? Um, what third team do you think makes sense? Again, I ever feel whatever your thoughts are. I would love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.